So, Dr. Sheldon, you mentioned the relationship between attention deficit, hyperactivity, and certain sleep disorders. Can you break it down the way you did for us uh, in the symposium? Certainly. There are a number of sleep disorders that, if looked at from a, an attention deficit problem, can be identified. If you take a, a, a large number of children that have attention deficit disorder, and you evaluate them for sleep disordered breathing. About a fifth to a quarter of those youngsters will have sleep disordered breathing, obstructive sleep apnea, pediatric mm -hmm. obstructive sleep apnea. Um, if you look at other sleep disorders, about the same number have been shown by researchers to, uh, doing uh, over the years, right. very uh, systematic studies to have periodic limb movement disorder. Now, is that a different 25%? That's a different set of it's kids. A different set, it's a different set of children that have right. uh, this particular sleep disorder. So if you're looking at about a fifth to a quarter of children with, with obstructive sleep apnea and a fifth to a quarter of people having uh, periodic limb movement disorder, then you're looking at 50% at right. of, of children with attention deficit problems that have been diagnosed. Yeah, you put hyperactivity in that also, uh, in that group? With or without hyperactivity. With or without. That have been diagnosed with the so-called ADHD. And what are the other, there was another 16% you said that had chaotic I, environment I, you talked sure. about? In, in, the periodic limb movement disorder and obstructive sleep disorder breathing are not the only two sleep disorders that exist. Okay. We're talking about sleepy children during the day, and really anything that can make a child sleepy during the day is important to assess. So children with circadian rhythm abnormalities. Right. So if they have a sleep phase delay syndrome where they can't go to sleep until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Correct. And they have to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to school. Correct. To catch a school bus. Right. Then they're really dealing with only three, four, five hours of sleep a night, sleep which is way, sleep. way uh, restricted. Correct. So they're sleepy during the day. It's difficult to pay attention. They're hyperactive. They're impulsive. And they have all of those other symptoms that, that can be related to what what uh, is generally known as ADHD. And when you said sleep apnea, you also included hypopnea and UARS. About, Where is in that too? I'm, I'm talking about obstructive sleep disordered breathing, obstructive, the diagnosis is pediatric obstructive sleep apnea. Right. Which is a continuum. Okay. It's, there's a, a, a wide continuum of, diag uh, of symptoms and pathologies or pathophysiology from just snoring, which has been shown in, in many different studies that children who only snore but don't have apnea they still can show neurocognitive deficits. Bonick showed it in mouth breathing. Yes. So, would so you would you even look at Bonick's work with mouth breathing, and that's perhaps included think, in there? Or I we think don't the know? bottom the bottom line is this: if you take all the children with chaotic environments, and you take all the children that have that have narcolepsy and mm -hmm. and other sleep disorders, circadian rhythm abnormalities, periodic limb movement disorder. Um, and, and obstructive sleep disorder breathing, you're probably dealing with about two-thirds of children who may be diagnosed with ADHD because they're sleepy during the day. Correct. And giving them a stimulant will wake them up. See. So it may be, but it may not be it's treating a symptom. Exactly. You're treating a symptom. You're not necessarily treating the underlying cause. And I, I, I have to emphasize that the most important aspect of evaluating a child for ADHD or whatever whatever it is we're looking at, their child with attention problems and learning difficulties and hyperactivity, is to do a sleep evaluation. A sleep evaluation is essential okay. in every single child that's being Great evaluated. Knowledge. 100% of those children need a sleep evaluation. Now, the first question that's asked after that is, do they need a sleep study? Okay. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they need a sleep evaluation. They need somebody who knows how to listen to 
obvious sleep-related symptoms. Yes. Who know how to who knows how to assess sleep-related abnormalities. To listen to the child and to listen to the parent to find out whether or not it's an underlying sleep-related disorder that is resulting in the daytime symptoms. And that's a pediatric sleep physician, ideally a I, pediatric well, sleep ideally specialist. It would, ideally it would be a child health care practitioner of any kind should be, able to, should be able to ask the right questions and listen appropriately, understand the language that is being spoken to them, and then make an accurate diagnosis. So and that's that, why you're doing your teaching. So that the cause can be so that the cause can be treated. Right. And not the symptoms. Correct. And and one just one more quick thing. Your experience and when you treat this, when you, if there is a sleep related uh, disorder and you treat it, do you see this attention deficit correcting itself? Often. Often, often when you, when the sleep disorder is treated, the attention the attention deficit disorder improves. However, not always. Okay. So I, I must emphasize that there is a lot that is that is unknown, and when diagnoses are based on a complex of symptoms, you're dealing with a syndrome. You're not dealing with a disorder. You're dealing with a syndrome okay. of which there may be many causes. Identify the cause first. There may be a, a large group of children that do have attention deficit disorder, but the final common pathway of that disorder is unclear. Okay. We don't know the neurobiology of it. We're, it there are hints of it, and it is very similar to sleep-related pathways. Right. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank That's you. That's great.